you're going to see your management move in ways that you never would have expected once they find out that you guys are trying to unionize. They're even going to throw this one at you. You don't have to pay a union monthly to stand up for you. You guys have a voice. We're going to listen to you, blah, 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 blah. Where was all of that energy before the union came along and started educating you guys? Where was the company at before that day? Had you ever even heard of your federal rights that are in, in place? Just It's plain as day for everybody to see, but they never post. They'll post the minimum wage up there, sure. But never do they post the National Labor Relations Board rights that you have. You never, almost never see that posted up, do you? In this very small amount of time that I've just obtained in organizing a company, it has been a real trip to see how these companies really start to move after they know that their employees are trying to unionize. It's very simple, they don't wanna sign a contract. They don't wanna be held accountable. A contract means that they could face some serious legal action. Just because of the National Labor Relations Board, they could face legal action if you know your rights without a union. But what the union does is get you that contract, not only for job security and representation, but to sit down and negotiate. Imagine the fact that the union hasn't even stepped foot in there yet, hasn't even gained all the votes, and yet are still getting you a raise right now as we speak. They're getting you that raise out of, they're giving you that raise out of fear. And I can guarantee you most likely that all of you are getting different amounts. You know, whether it's a, an establishment that has drivers and dock workers, everybody's getting different amounts. So like here at ADF Freight Union, we all get paid $30.18 an hour, all the way across the board. Bobtail drivers, road, road drivers, dock workers, yes, only dock, right? No CDL involved. Everyone makes the same. And the road drivers, we res road drivers, we get a certain cent per mile, which is at 75 cents right now, and we're going to top out at 80 cents. Then we'll be at almost 35 bucks an hour. So... In the last four years, maybe you've seen a $4 raise, $6 raise. Well, the union just got us here at ABF Freight, $10, 10 and a half bucks of a raise. And if the International Brotherhood of Teamsters is able to negotiate for you a pension, solid, especially here on the West Coast, being a part of the West Coast Fund, it only takes five years to become vested. And even before you become vested and you die, your children are a beneficiary of about $1,000 a month until the day that they turn 18. That's how that works. Now imagine once you become vested, it's even more. Not to mention when you finally do retire, when your age plus your, year, uh, plus your years of service equals 80, right? You're looking at a minimum of $4,300 a month for the rest of your life. And you can add that to your social security, which they are currently trying to increase on you to the age of 70 instead of 62. Now, let's say you only do five years, right? You get vested five years, you leave, you decide for whatever reason to go do something else. You know, as the, as, as the pension stands, you can still, you can still collect at the age of 62, about $500 a month for the rest of your entire life and something that you can hand on to your wife. That's how that works. So it's just a matter of becoming educated. People spread misinformation. It's one of the things that people do because we all like to think that what we have going on is okay and we're gonna be all right. But I'm 35, almost 36 years old. I've been in the business of working for a while and never before have I seen benefits, pension contributions, a force, never before have I seen a force stronger at a company than being a union member of the International Brotherhood of Teamsters. I just, I have, I'm not a recruiter. I'm not a business agent. I'm not a, a company organizer. I, even though I'm getting into organizing, I do this because I'm passionate about it. It's what I believe in. It's what I want to have, be able to hand on to my children and what I want my family's children, right? Nieces, nephews, to be able to have the opportunity to seize when they get older. What is wrong with that? How are you going to knock that? Ain't nobody ever lost a pension, okay? And the IBT over here, 
No member has ever lost their pension. Sure, Yellow stopped making pension contributions, okay? They stopped making those contributions. That should have been a telltale sign right away. If it was me at Yellow and they stopped making pension contributions, I would have left 100%. It's a difficult conversation to have, I know, but truth needs to be spoken. And these companies need to know that when they start withdrawing and playing stupid games like that, that, you know, we're, we have the option to leave. We have the option to go elsewhere. We don't necessarily have to go on strike, but we can leave. And we have, to, we have to follow as they have to follow what they are bound by in these contracts. But the biggest thing that I want you to take away from this is all the power you have collectively, even without a union trying to get a union in. All the new treatment you're going to receive from management and the raises that you're going to get. If anything, just keep on threatening that you're going to have meetings. I guarantee you, you'll probably get a raise every couple of months.